Remember this from the time when we discussed the RC circuits. Remember we had two switches, S1 and S2. We charged the capacitor by closing S1 and opening S2. Then we have the current flowing in this loop marked with a red kind of loop. And uh, we discharge it by open, opening S1 and closing S2. Now what we figured out is that the charge in the capacitor is given by this expression Q infinity times 1 minus exponential minus T over RC. The RC is what we call the time constant. Sorry here for the position of that. Let's see if we can erase it. Okay, so this is it. Okay, color changed and the voltage since the voltage is directly related to the charge and the capacitor is given by a similar expression and the current is given by this expression for discharge the expressions are slightly different for the charge and the voltage and it's the same expression for the current now the bottom line is for a capacitor at the beginning we are going to have a large current but no charge our capacitor is not going to be charged or in the discharge case is going to be fully charged but the current in both cases is going to become eventually zero in our analysis this is what we did we wrote Kirchhoff's rule for example for the charging um, so we added them up E minus the voltage across the resistor minus the voltage across the capacitor is equal to zero and we used Ohm's law for the voltage across the, uh, the resistor so we wrote it as a time dependent format and then we wrote the charge in the capacitor as a function of the voltage across the capacitor and we wrote them up like this and then we remembered that at t equals zero our charge is equal to zero that's what we have there and after a long time our current is going to become equal to zero for the initial conditions that led us to figure out the maximum current to be equal E over R and for the final expression it was just confirming that the maximum charge is the voltage the final voltage times the capacitance Now, the final result was that we found an expression for the charge and the current as given as this. The charge is going to follow this particular shape and every time constant, the first time constant, uh, the amount of charge in the capacitor is going to be about 63%, then 86%, etc. Uh, and then the current is given by that expression. we are going to do a similar analysis for the inductor the inductor is initially non-magnetized since he does not have a current is not magnetic the current through it is initially zero and it's going to go to a maximum value where the inductor since it's just a wire if we don't have any more change in current is going to act just just as a wire so I is initially zero so the voltage across the resistor is initially zero and we'll go back to it again so if you consider that loop if the voltage across the resistance is zero the voltage across the inductor is the same as the voltage across the uh, source 
as the inductor is magnetized, I is going to increase, VR is going to increase, and VL is going to decrease accordingly. And we are going to have this behavior for VL and this behavior for I, for the current I. Okay, we do the same analysis. Kirchhoff's loop rule voltage across this is my minus this is my plus this is my plus this is my minus this is my plus this is my minus so going around here voltage across the source E minus voltage across the resistor VR minus voltage across the inductor VL is equal to zero sorry that the graphic has the inductor and the, uh, the resistor uh, in the wrong order but it should not matter now VR of course is R times I ohms law with the time dependent expression written like this VL is minus L delta I delta T so my expression becomes like this notice that this is a very similar expression to the expression that we had for the capacitor if you remember for the capacitor we had E minus IR and I we wrote it as delta Q over delta T times R and then minus Q of T, this is again Q of T, over C is equal to zero. Now here it's very much the same equation if I'm going to rearrange it. We have E minus delta I of T over delta T L minus I of T R is equal to zero you know, just I rearrange that equation if you recall from this equation we found an expression actually I wrote for you the expression for Q as a function of time we said it is Q at infinity exponential uh, 1 minus exponential minus t over rc so in here since it's the same expression here we should get the same expression in i so i of t should be equal to i at infinity times 1 minus exponential and here is the t look here the C it's 1 over C so we are going to have 1 over R at the bottom so it's going to be minus T and instead of the C I'm going to have 1 over R and then instead of the R here I'm going to have L so it is I infinity forgive me for going to the next line 1 minus exponential minus T R over L in this first case whatever is below the T for the case of a capacitor RC we determined that that's the time constant for the capacitor so similarly here whatever is not T here is going to be the time constant and, and in this case as I hope you notice it's going to be L over R so in summary once we move the switch from A to B writing Kirchhoff's voltage rule E minus IR of T minus L delta I over delta T is equal to zero 
the change in current as a function of time is at a maximum. Because the change in current is at a maximum, the voltage induced by the inductor is going to be at a maximum. And we are going to have VL equal to E, the power provided by the supply. But the current at that instant, time t equals zero, is zero. Long time after the switch is moved to B, the current is going to stop from changing. Delta I is going to become zero. So then the induced uh, EMF by the inductor is going to become zero as well. And the current, if the induced voltage across the inductor is zero, there is no voltage anymore across the inductor. The inductor is going to act as a wire and the current in the circuit is then given by E over R. This term is zero and we solve for I. The, the inductor is then fully magnetized. So the expression for I as a function of time and the voltage across the inductor as a function of time are given by this. Graphically, they're going to look like this. The purple is for the current and the blue, the light blue is for the voltage. As you notice, like we had for a capacitor, we have, after one time constant, we have 63% uh, of the maximum current and so on. For, uh, in the case of the voltage, it drops to 37% of the maximum voltage. So in summary, for charging, this is what we have. The time constant is very much what's in the exponent of the exponential. It has to be exponential minus t over tau. So the exponent gives us the time constant as L over R. For discharging, it's the same idea. I'm not going through the process, but I is going to be uh, given by I0 exponential minus T over tau, because eventually there's going to be no current. And VL is going to be given by the same expression. There would be no voltage across the inductor eventually.